Wake up! Your house is on fire! Huh? What? You see, I told you it was funnier when I did it to you. Yes. Yes. Hilarious. What's the matter? Have a rough night? Mmm. Overdid it on the soporific. Why do I feel like I've had this conversation before? I'm just glad you're in the mood to converse again. Seriously, you took so much of that snake oil last night, I was starting to think you wanted me quiet for good. It's no personal slight. I just need some quiet time, or I'll go insane. I get it. We all need our space. I know it's not easy, but there's really no need. Not easy? Bill, I've been hearing your voice since you died. You don't shut up unless I take that accursed medicine. I'd say that qualifies as a bit more than not easy. Yeah, well, how do you think I feel? You think I enjoy being trapped here, listening to you whine about how hard your life's become? You at least still have yours. If you're just as miserable, why don't you just go away and leave me in peace? Believe me, I wish I knew how. But the bottom fact is, you're stuck with me. So you can either keep living this way and ruin your life even more than you already have, or you can do as I've told you and try to figure out a way to let me move on. Right. For the thousandth time, you want me to find the burglar from the flower shop. Yes, exactly. I still don't get how that's going to help. I can understand your confusion, considering it was you who killed me. But the point remains. You wouldn't have been in that situation in the first place if not for him. Once the criminal has been caught and is in custody, we'll both get what we want. A decent night's sleep? More than that, you'll have that elusive thing you always wanted to give others. Closure. You do realize the trail's pretty much frozen at this point. Our man has seemingly vanished into the ether. That's no excuse not to keep trying. I know the cases Upton's been giving you these past few months haven't been the most thrilling, but they've at least kept you active. So just keep at it. Something has to turn up eventually. Unless, of course, you want to wind up in Riverview Asylum. And if that happens, I'm really not going to keep quiet. Fine. Good man. Now, I suggest you stop talking to thin air, or Adelaide's gonna start wondering if you've gone mental. Or just maybe, she'll stop wondering. <laughs> Very funny. I always like that self-portrait of Adelaide's mother, even if the eyes do always follow you around the room. Don't worry, Miles. I don't watch when you and Adelaide are having your private time. It would be nice if you didn't spend the whole time humming. I thought you appreciated some romantic music. That's a fun little apparatus Adelaide got you. Very soothing. Watching it spin long enough puts me right to sleep. I'd say that's really more the soporific's doing. Remember before you started taking that medicine, and you could actually read a book for more than ten minutes before falling asleep? You were a lot more fun to talk to back then. Oh, wouldn't you say it's time for a change of clothes, Miles? You've been wearing that coat for who knows how long. So? Addie gave it to me. Besides, it gives me character. Right! Brooding detective in a long black coat. That's never been seen before. What are you talking about, Bill? Never mind. Oh, wouldn't you say it's time for- So? Right! What are you talking- Never mind. It's admirable just how organized Adelaide is. Maybe someday the same can be said about you. Miles, care to explain what you're doing? Just checking to make sure everything that needs to be in here still is. Right. If you start taking that stuff during the day, you're really going to have problems. Well, look who's awake. Ready to rejoin the living? Very much so. You were talking in your sleep again. Did I say anything interesting? Do you ever? <laughs> you have to admit, she's got you there. How are you feeling? A touch groggy. I think I took a bit too much of the soporific last night. That's what I thought. When you went for your after-lunch nap, you'd barely gotten breakfast down. I saved you some bread and cheese if you're hungry. Thank you, but I haven't got much of an appetite. You really should regulate your doses more carefully, love. 
I'm sure dull senses and an empty stomach aren't much help to your work. By the way, a message arrived via courier for you this morning. I put it on the table along with today's newspaper. Thank you, dear. Bowlingworth Ale. My favorite! And a nice souvenir from the Angel. You really ought to go back there someday. I can see why Adelaide calls that plant Miles Jr. It's a spitting image. Ah, the Havisham case. Our first time out as partners. First in a long line of successful cases. It's nice to have a memory of the good old days. Hmm. Upton says she's got a big case for me. Does she go into any more detail than that? No. But then you know Upton. Always on a need-to-know basis. Especially since she's been giving me these cases under the table. To be fair, they haven't exactly been anything of note. True, but she's still sticking her neck out for me. I can understand why she's so secretive about it. I think she just misses having you around the station. Poor Connie. With you quitting and me dying, she must be bored stiff at work. Anyway, I'm supposed to meet her at the ruined coffee house. That can't be right. It's not like Constance to make mistakes. She must have gotten in somehow. Guess I'll head over there and see what she's got then. I'd love to see the look on Snelling's face if he ever found out you kept your old truncheon. Enjoy your reading. I'll be back soon. Give my regards to Constance. Ah, the Ruen Coffee House. Worst Java in Lamplight City, but there's no better place to overhear all the rumors and gossip in town. Just make sure you don't get too close to the other patrons. Discretion was never your forte. Not much of a hurry to clean up in here, are they? She's running back and forth at lightning speed. Clearly, she dips into the coffee supply. All that metal and tubing just to serve a hot cup of coffee? Give me an old-fashioned tea kettle any day. Uh, best avoid that one. He looks like he might tip over at any moment. Reminds me of when I was alive. Ah, good times. He and his friend are having quite the conversation. I bet it's really boring. He's missing his left arm below the elbow. How do you suppose that happened? Judging by the sooty apron, this man is either a metal worker, a chimney sweep, or just really lazy when it comes to washing. Self-portrait as a desperate man by B. Calvert. <laughs> a bit like looking in the mirror, isn't it, Miles? Dr. W. S. Sales Wonder Tonic. The best and safest medicine for both gentlemen and ladies. Prevents consumption, general weakness, feverishness, indigestion, constipation, diarrhea, loss of appetite. They should also mention that it prevents breathing, heart... If it isn't my old friend, up to no good. Hello, Fordham. It's good to see you. How did you get them to let you in here? It's rather simple, really. The owner and I have an understanding. 
He pretends women are allowed in coffee houses, and I don't report his unsavory business practices to Chief Snelling. Sounds like a good deal. What sort of unsavory business practices are we talking about? Oh, we haven't got time to get into that now. But take some advice. Don't order anything that isn't water. Managed to sneak another case past Snelling, eh? Yes, and if he finds out I did, it won't be pretty. This is a big one. We're not in Lost Cat territory anymore. So stop teasing me and tell me what it is already. Do you know Madame Laura Dupre? Laura Dupre? She's one of those Gascon Grand Dams, isn't she? That's right. I'm surprised you've heard of her. I didn't think you cared about those types of people. I don't, but Adelaide has several of them as clients. She gets paid to pretend to care about their lives, and I get to hear the sort of details. Madame Dupre died the day before yesterday. Her funeral was held this morning. My condolences. But halfway through the service, the mourners heard a loud knocking coming from inside her coffin. She wasn't dead? Apparently not. Nearly interred alive, although her doctor swears she had no pulse. Dupre's son Andrew was quick to suspect foul play. He accused a man named Albert Martin, and the police arrested him. So where do I come in? Sounds like the case has already been solved. I strongly suspect that Martin is innocent, especially considering the talk of him having used black magic on Dupre. The police feel they have enough evidence to convict, so they're not bothering to investigate any further. You're going to look into it and see if I'm right, then find the person who was really behind this. Has Madame Dupre recovered from her ordeal? I'm afraid not. Apparently she's been catatonic since they pulled her out of the coffin. How unfortunate. If you'd like to question Mr. Martin, he's being held at the Bow Street Jail. Or you could take a look around his house. It's at 451 Compton Street in Worcester. And the Dupre home? That's at Emmeline and Comtesse, right across from the old Angeline convent. It's also possible you might run into the police during your investigation, since they're technically still on the case. Thanks for the warning. Was there anything you wanted to talk about before you get started? Yes, actually. I had a couple of questions. Let's hear them then. Don't suppose there have been any developments regarding Bill's murder? Unfortunately not. The department hasn't exactly been focusing on that case as a priority. The general attitude is that it was an accident. Bill died an honorable death in the line of duty. Would have been nice if they bothered saying that at the funeral. And of course there are still those who blame you for his death, Snelling being the first and foremost. But the man who really caused Bill's death is still out there. Yes, I know, but it looks like you're on your own if you want to find him. My hands are tied. I can only ask around so much before the higher-ups get suspicious. Just don't give up. New Britannia may be a big city, but the criminal world is surprisingly close-knit. If you find any connections or leads during your other cases, be sure and let me know. I'll do the same if I find anything out. See, she has a priority straight. You could learn a lot from Upton. I wanted to go over the case with you. Okay, what have you got? What do you know about Madame Dupre? Only what I've read about her in the paper. She's been married thrice, which I can empathize with, and she's extremely rich, which I can't. What makes you think this Martin fellow is innocent? The fact that the only evidence is the word of Dupre's son. I've seen this sort of thing thousands of times, and I'm sure you did too. They're just looking for a scapegoat. You're the only person I know who can put it right. Upton's intentions are noble, but she has to realize this is just a drop in the ocean. That's enough about the case for now. Okay. That's it, I think. Then you'd better get back to it. Well, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to help you find the flower shop burglar. But I suppose freeing an innocent man is a worthy diversion. You are aware this is private property, sir. Yes, I'm Miles Fordham, private investigator. I'm looking into the incident involving Madame Dupre. I assume this is she? 
You assume correctly, Mr. Fordham. My apologies, but I thought the police had already made an arrest. That's right, but there's still some doubt as to the man's guilt. May I ask your name, sir? I am Dr. Fellows, Madame Dupre's private physician. I'm afraid she is in no state to be answering questions at present. Are any other members of the family home? Her son, Mr. Montgomery, is in the entrance hall. I had to give him a mild sedative to settle his nerves, but he should be all right to converse. Then if you don't mind, I'll have a look around. This fountain probably looked nicer when it was working, but right now it's just a breeding ground for mosquitoes. With her vast sums of wealth, Madame Dupre could probably feed a starving family for the next 30 years. Instead, she uses the money to keep her hedges trimmed. Her eyes are glazed over, and she's got a vacant, expressionless stare. She seems completely oblivious to her surroundings. If we didn't know she'd been buried alive, I'd say she was just exhibiting the typical symptoms of your average rich person. Doctor, may I ask you a few questions? Please, be my guest. Tell me about Madame Dupre. She is a great woman, and a pillar of the community. I cannot imagine why something like this could happen to her, or how someone could be capable of such a barbaric feat. Though this ordeal has been terrible, I am confident she will overcome. The power of her physical constitution is surpassed only by her strength of character. You think he'd say the same things if he wasn't on her payroll? I highly doubt it. What were the circumstances surrounding Madame Dupre's supposed death? Her son, Andrew, sent for me a few days ago after finding her unconscious and unresponsive. As I was unable to detect a pulse or breath, I had no other recourse but to declare her deceased. I judged that Madame Dupre had likely suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. It was most shocking to be proven wrong at a funeral. <laughs> I can imagine. Where was the funeral held, by the way? St. Denis Cemetery. Madame Dupre wished to be interred in the tomb of a father's family, name of Chesterton. Perhaps I'll go have a look. How long have you been Madame Dupre's private physician? Five years, and I've been practicing medicine for the past 30. I still spend a couple of days a week treating patients at Riverview Asylum. Oh, good. Maybe if you're lucky, he could be your doctor someday. 30 years is quite a long time. You must have seen some incredible advances in the field of medicine. I have, yes. I can only wonder how things will change with all this talk of ethericity. The speculation it can be used to restore necrotic tissue and instantly heal broken bones, among other things. If you ask me, a good bloodletting will never go out of fashion. Did you examine Madame Dupre after she reanimated? Of course. Physically, she appeared to be in fine health aside from minor dehydration. I found no marks or bruising on her body. Mentally is a different story, however. She's remained in an unresponsive state ever since. Do you have any opinions on what caused Madame Dupre to appear dead? The most likely cause I can imagine is some sort of poison or toxin. What leads you to believe Madame Dupre was poisoned? The symptoms she experienced were consistent with prior cases of poisoning I've studied. And didn't the young man arrested have ties to some kind of black magic cult? There have been reported cases of these practitioners using poisons to make people appear dead. Then commanding them to do their bidding. I recall reading about a man in the West Indies who was given tetrodotoxin, that's the toxic secretion from a pufferfish, declared dead and buried. He appeared alive in his village some 20 years later. Doesn't that seem a bit far-fetched to you, Doctor? Facts are facts, Mr. Fordham. Surely someone in your line of work can appreciate that. Those are all the questions I've got for now. I hope I answered them adequately. Oh, hello. Are you the new servant? No, I'm Miles Fordham. I'm a private investigator looking into your mother's attempted murder. How did you know I was her son? Oh, of course. You must have sensed it with your detective's intuition. I should have guessed by that giant head of yours. <laughs> <laughs>
Are you feeling all right, Mr. Montgomery? Yes, yes, I'm fine. Much better than when those pesky police officers were snooping around earlier. But I like you, Mr. Fordham. I can already tell you're not like them. Not like them at all. Please, call me Andrew. Yes, well, I'll have a look around, and I may need to ask you some questions. Do you think you can handle that? I can. In fact, I really, really look forward to it. If the good doctor gave him a mild sedative, I'd hate to see what the stuff you take would have done to him. Must have cost the Dupre's a cool copper. Dupre looks like she's holding on to that poor bastard for dear life. Do you suppose that's for the bird? Or perhaps so the Dupre family members can get a good look at themselves on the way out of the house. Certainly no shortage of bowls or food preparation items around here. Some kind of water dispensing device, maybe? I was never very good at finding my way around the kitchen. Yeah, it looks like gumbo's on the menu tonight. I wonder how it compares with Upton's special recipe. Uh, it's times like these make me wish I could still eat. Judging by the amount of food this family probably eats, washing the dishes must take forever. Looks like the type of spices you'd use in a stew. Most likely paprika or turmeric. Nice variety of reds and oranges. Pardon me, miss. What? Who are you? I'm Miles Fordham. I'm investigating the attempted murder of Madame Dupre. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm very busy. I, I can't help you. Do you know anything about what happened to Madame Dupre? No, I don't. Please, leave me to my work. I shouldn't be talking to you. All right, I'm going. Pardon me, miss. I told you I'm very busy, and I'll get- All right, I'm- Pardon me, miss. I told you I- All right. A horrible little porcelain figurine. Madame Dupre didn't strike me as the type to play with dolls. This is always my favorite part of detective work. Nothing inside but a bunch of extra doilies. Ugh, how disappointing. Maybe you should steal one, just to spite Madame Dupre for not giving us any good clues. No, Bill. You're no fun, Miles. Ah, the Gascone docks. The artist definitely took some liberties. You can't see a single... Nice bouquet of roses. Although it would make things much easier if they were Easter lilies. If only. Must be nice being able to afford keeping your oil lamps lit during the daytime. Goodness, someone went overboard with the flowers. This brings back some memories, doesn't it? Ones I'd rather forget. These should be useful. The science of pharmacology. Yeah, I'm sure it's riveting stuff. I can only wonder what sort of potions Andrew concocts in this thing. Decadent. Is this really the best that medical science has to offer? What in the ether is that thing supposed to be? Actually, I'd rather not know. 
Dr. Tennyson's Vigor Pills. These would make a sloth act like a hummingbird. A gentle reminder that everyone's time is slowly running out. It looks as though this folded piece of paper is being used as a bookmark. I hope remembering what page they were on wasn't too important. Looks like it's a letter for Andrew. The science of pharmacology. Why would anyone need so many flowers in one room? Perhaps it's to mask the odors of those chemicals on the workstation. Hmm. Could be. Yeah, it must be a nice place to sit and listen to music. Oh, look! It's one of those new audio cylindrographs. I can't quite wrap my head around how they can manage to get sound out of a wax cylinder. I don't know much about art, but I see Madame Dupre and I at least have similar tastes. I've never seen so many beauty products together in one place. Doesn't look like they get used much, though. Whoever lives in this room really likes plants and flowers, don't they? Locked. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Nice little cottage. Looks like it would make a nice cozy spot to retire. If I hadn't already retired from life, that is. Well, someone's fancy. I never liked these types of beds much. They feel too claustrophobic. I always thought they had a certain appeal myself. Yes, you would think that about a bed that lets you shut out the rest of the world. Let's have a look through these papers. Aha, what's this? Interesting. This Miss Montgomery must be Andrew's sister. But why is she renting a room in the Chum? Guess there's really only one way to find out. They're all empty. How unusual. Not to mention disappointing. Lock. fainting couch. You know, I always wanted one of these, but I never fainted enough to justify buying one. A much younger Madame Dupre. I suppose that's a nice alternative to a mirror. One of those melodramatic romances. I read it a while back, and I couldn't tell you a thing about it. Now that one sounds interesting. I was always a fan of bed letter short stories. Doesn't appear to be very brief if there's two volumes of it. I wonder if anyone outside the family would find this even remotely interesting. Choice and consequence. <laughs> Who in their right mind would write a book about that? I don't even want to know what that one's about. 
I read that one last year. If you ever wanted to know the intimate details of a buffalo's anatomy, I highly recommend it. Choice and cons- Doesn't appear to be very brief if there's two- Let's see if there's anything in these drawers. Damn, nothing but personal effects and more stationery. Don't forget the first rule of detective work. If there's nothing useful inside, check underneath and between. Ah, yes, of course. Thanks for the reminder. Uh-huh, now this is intriguing. It would appear that Madame Dupre was taking music lessons. Her current predicament has probably put an end to that venture, though. That's an old uniform, from the turn of the century by the look of it. This must be Madame Dupre's first husband. Kinda strange that she'd still keep his portrait in the bedroom. You've got some huge bags under your eyes, Miles. Reminds me of the case we had on that strange train. Uh, don't remind me.
I have some questions for you. Oh, goody. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? She came back from the dead. I couldn't believe it. My mother resurrected just like Jesus. Uh, yes. I heard you're the one who accused Mr. Martin of the crime. Oh, no, I already talked to the police about that. I don't want to think about it right now. That's a rather exotic bird you've got. I like looking at him. He has such pretty colors, doesn't he? That he does. You know, I've always wondered what he might taste like. Is that bad, do you think? I really couldn't say, Mr. Montgomery. I found a letter upstairs addressed to a Miss Montgomery. Who is that? You were snooping around up there? Naughty, naughty, Mr. Fordham. It's part of my job. Now are you going to tell me or not? Hmm. Nope. I don't think I will. You're the detective. I'll let you solve that mystery yourself. I think this mystery could be best solved with a punch in the nose. God, I wish I still had fists. How do you typically spend your days, Mr. Montgomery? What are your interests? Oh, a little of this and a little of that. Nothing as exciting as what you do, I'm sure. Ooh, tell me, do most bad people start crying when you catch them? I'll bet it's a laugh riot to see them sobbing away. <laughs> no, Mr. Montgomery, most of them don't. Well, that's a real shame, isn't it? Thanks for your time. No, thank you for yours. This is ridiculous. He won't be of any use in this state. If it takes him as long to snap out of it as it takes you, we'll be waiting around here until noontime tomorrow. There has to be a way to bring him back to his senses. Maybe that quack outside knows something of use. Doctor, may I ask you a few questions? Please be my guest. May I ask exactly what kind of sedative you gave Andrew? A simple tincture of laudanum. It's what I give all my nervous patients. He seems a bit out of sorts. Hot meat kettle. It can have that effect, but it usually wears off in half a day or so. Is there a way to bring him out of his condition sooner? A stimulant would have the opposite effect, but I wouldn't recommend mixing the two. It could have potentially harmful effects on his heart. Oh, of course. I wasn't planning on doing anything of the sort. I was just curious. It's cute how you act like you have no experience in these matters. It's almost convincing. Those are all the questions I've got for now. I hope I answered them adequately. are glazed if we didn't know she's running back and forth all that mess Judging by the sooty, just one of many patrons asleep at a coffee house. Can we talk? Go on. I wanted to go. Okay. Madame Dupre's son isn't being very helpful. Is he refusing to talk? More like incapable. The family doctor has him pretty well drugged to the gills. I need to find some way to perk him up. You know, we are in a coffee house. I have a feeling it will take something a touch more powerful than coffee. That's enough about the case for now. Okay. That's it, I think. Then you'd better get...
fought him? Is that you? You look like something the cat spat up. Hello, Giles. It's lovely to see you too. What brings you around the jail? I thought you'd quit being a detective. I'm looking to speak with Mr. Albert Martin. Oh, I see. Well, that's him in the first cell there. I'd say what needs saying as quick as you can, though. He's headed for the gallows in the morning. What? Already? But what about a trial? No trial necessary when there's black magic involved. This little half-breed's already sealed his fate. Such a charming fellow, isn't he? He's watching you like a hawk. Looks liable to toss you in one of his cells if you try any funny business. Not much of a view, but then it's... Mr. Martin? Who are you? My lawyer? No, I'm actually here to help you. The name's Miles Fordham. I'm a private investigator. H how are you going to help me? I'm looking into the attack on Madame Dupre. I believe you're innocent. Oh, thank heaven. That's, that's music to my ears. Would you mind answering a few questions for me? Friend, if it means saving me from the noose, I'll tell you nothing less than God's truth. Interesting choice of phrase for someone accused of using black magic. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? What's to tell? She's a twisted, evil woman who got what was coming to her. Whoever attacked her deserves some sort of reward for the service they're doing the community. So it wasn't you then? No. I'm innocent, Mr. Fordham. You have to believe me. I'm afraid you're not making that very easy right now, Mr. Martin. Do you know anything about the circumstances of Madame Dupre's supposed death? No! I had nothing to do with it! Then why did her son accuse you? Probably because he's just as ignorant as she is. What I meant was, how did her son know to accuse you? Have you had any contact with the family before? Yes, you could say that. Uh-oh. That gleam in his eye says it all. You see, I'm involved with Dupre's daughter, Juliette Montgomery. Dupre doesn't like that one bit. She, uh, she even threatened me once. Is that right? Yes. She might have everyone else fooled, but that woman is the devil incarnate. I, I can't understand how something so heartless and cruel could have spawned someone as pure and oh, loving as my... Dear Juliet, he's not really helping his case much, is he? Tell me about Juliet. She's wonderful. Such a beautiful, kind soul. She hasn't come to see me yet, but I'm sure that's because of all the confusion in the last few days. Juliet wouldn't believe for a second that I would be capable of harming her mother. I'm sure of it. How did you two get involved? We met at the university. Your classmates? <laughs> Hardly. They wouldn't allow someone like me to enroll there. Juliet studies botany. I work as an assistant in the greenhouse. We started talking, and oh, she actually treated me like a, a person. To everyone else, I was just the boy who fetched the test tubes. But Juliet actually wanted to hear what I had to say. Had the same taste in books and art. Didn't just treat me like some piece of gardening equipment. She even shared some of her notes with me after I told her I was interested in botany as well. From there, things just got better. I don't expect you to understand or approve, but that's how it happened. Oh, you'd be surprised. It doesn't sound too different to how my wife and I got together. Except I was a detective and she was a singer at a bar. And she's... Yes, Mr. Martin. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. How often is Juliet in the greenhouse? Every weekday, but I doubt she's there now. She's probably trying to find out where I am and working to have me released. Somehow, I wouldn't bet on that. How did you end up in here? I was just minding my own business at home when the police showed up with no warning. They made some outrageous claims about me putting some sort of curse on Madame Dupre. The next thing I knew, I was here. Oh, Mama must be beside herself with worry. I just hope she's all right. What does your mother do, Mr. Martin? Uh, she helps people. I was hoping you'd be just a bit more specific. Uh, she provides spiritual help to those who seek guidance. She's a spiritualist. 
Mm, not quite. She's more like, how can I explain it? Uh, you know how a priest holds mass to spread the word of God to the people? My mother holds services and calls on the spirits to walk among us, providing healing and guidance. So she's a religious leader? If you want to give her that title, it would be the most appropriate. And does this religion of yours have a name? You'd probably know it as voodoo, but it doesn't mean what you think it does. People are so quick to judge and portray us as evil when they have no idea. So you practice voodoo, do you? Are you making fun of me, Mr. Fordham? No, of course not. Apologies if it seemed as though I was. It's just that the police are convinced that black magic was involved in Madame Dupre's apparent death. That's because that idiot son of hers knew about my mother, and like all bigoted fools, assumed that we're involved in devil worship in the black arts. But I can assure you that this is most certainly not the case, Mr. Fordham. Of course. I didn't mean to imply. Just... Uh, just forget it. That's all for now. Oh, wait. Uh, before you go, would you do me a favor? Would you go see my mother at our house and give her a message? You're at 451 Compton Street, right? Yes, that's right. Could you tell her I said, St. Rock's dog is barking? I suppose I could do that, yes. Oh, thank you. Whatever happened to a simple I love you? St. Dennis Cemetery. Best view in the city. It's just a shame none of the residents can enjoy it. I think I'm buried around here somewhere. Wonder how the old gravestone is doing these days. Looks like people have left markings and offerings in front of this tomb. You may think it's a silly superstition, but I wish you'd leave a bottle of Bowlingworth at my grave every now and then. This just goes to show you can't take it with you, so you might as well spend it all on a giant tomb. I don't know him. Must be a recent addition to the force. Well, at least he won't recognize you. Good day to you, officer. Good day, sir. How may I be of assistance? Would you mind letting me in the tomb? Afraid I can't. This tomb is currently part of a police investigation and ain't available for visits until further notice. But it's my dearly departed Aunt Hester's birthday today, and I always bring her flowers. I'm sorry, sir, but I'll come back in a few days. I... Good day to you, officer. Afraid I ain't got time for... Please. Nice view of the river from up... The plaque says Harrison. Doesn't look very opulent, so I guess it doesn't... Gad, is this someone's room or a jungle? Quite a fascinating array of plants in here, not to mention the machinery on the table. Seems like Juliet is very interested in getting extra credit. That's quite the book collection. It almost puts Adelaide's to shame. All impeccably cataloged and organized as well, which makes the two missing volumes stand out even more. Etheric pressure. 
What a bunch of nonsense. I have no idea, nor desire, to know what purpose that thing has. Well now, this is interesting. Just a bunch of technical nonsense. I can't understand a word of it. Well, would you look at that. Etheric pressure. They're just doing what flies do best. Those are the most vibrant flowers we've seen in a while. I bet they smell extra strong. Yes, they certainly do. It's a good thing you're the one with the nose. I'm guessing they're probably full of more scientific equipment or plant-related stuff. This plant makes Miles Jr. look like a single blade of grass. I wonder what sort of fertilizer or growth tonic these plants are getting. Whatever it is, it's definitely working. They appear to be scientific scribbling. That makes two of us. They appear to be... That makes two... Those are the most vibrant... Yes, they... It's a good thing you... as though we've journeyed to the tropics. I don't know how you can stand to keep that coat on in here. Those flowers are definitely not native to this area. They seem to be thriving in their glass tubes, though. Quite the assortment of plants they keep in here. I wonder if they serve any purpose or are just meant to look pretty. Judging from that pipe, that contraption must be used to keep the plants hydrated. It looks like I've never seen a flower grow that big. What do you suppose they're feeding them? They're one of those cute little Japanese trees that are all the rage these days. Personally, I don't see how giving a tree a haircut... Pardon the disturbance, but are you Juliet Montgomery? I am. And you are? Miles Fordham. I'm a private investigator looking into the events surrounding your mother's attempted murder. Ah, of course. Have you got time to answer some questions? Yes, that shouldn't be a problem. Do you know anything about the events leading up to your mother's premature internment? No, it was a complete shock. Mother seemed to be perfectly healthy and full of life. Then, without warning, she was dead. Or so we thought. I take it you were glad to be wrong? Well, what a ridiculous question. Of course I was. What sort of heartless beast would celebrate their mother's death? Oh, I could name a few. Juliet definitely didn't shed any tears over Madame Dupre, though. That much is obvious. Miss Montgomery, you don't have to lie to me. I'm not going to assume you tried killing your mother just because you weren't upset by her death. I felt terrible about it. You have to understand, I didn't want her to be dead. I just felt a sense of... relief. Please, don't think me a horrible person, Mr. Fordham. It's just that Mother and I aren't currently on the best of terms. Why don't you and your mother get along? We've never completely seen eye to eye on anything. She always disapproved of anything I did. When I was younger, she used to forbid me from speaking to the servants. I saw no harm in a kind word or smile, but she warned us that if we were too familiar, 
they would take liberties. Then when I declared my intentions to pursue academic studies, she really went livid. In her opinion, a university education was tantamount to a chastity belt. What sort of man would want a wife with a head full of useless facts, she'd say. Personally, I've always found intelligence to be quite attractive. I assume your mother didn't approve of your involvement with Mr. Martin? A rather forward question, Mr. Fordham. But you're not mistaken. I'm not sure how she managed to find out about Albert and me. But when she did, she nearly had a conniption. As I'm sure you can understand, the situation at home has been less than perfect in the last few months. I'd really rather not dwell on it. You mentioned you were friends with the servants. Yes, that's right. I didn't care that they worked for us. Everyone needs a friend. Did your mother ever mistreat them? Mistreat? No, I wouldn't say so. She was always very stern, though, and quite cold. If they ever shirked their duties or misbehaved, they were punished, of course, but nothing out of the ordinary that I ever saw. Most of the servants are my friends, but I'm closest with Amelie, the kitchen maid. Mother wasn't too happy about that. Amelie's been around as long as I can remember. She's like the aunt I never had. Do you know anything about ethericity, Miss Montgomery? You surprise me, Mr. Fordham. I had no idea someone of your profession would know or care about something like that. I've found that it pays to be open-minded. To answer your question, yes, I am familiar with the theory of ethericity. In fact, it's recently become a focus of my studies. Despite what the newspapers have been reporting, it's already possible to access it in small quantities from the air around us. Have you conducted any experiments? No. My research has been purely theoretical. I don't have the means to do anything practical, I'm afraid. Deceiver, dissembler, her trousers are alight. I can't understand why Juliet might not want to make her research public, though. What can you tell me about Albert Martin? I'm not quite sure where to begin. Why not start by telling me what your relationship with him was? We met here at the greenhouse. He was working as an assistant, sweeping and cleaning and fetching things for the students. My focus was on academics, naturally. I wasn't too interested in romance. In fact, I've had to turn away nearly every single one of my classmates. But with Albert, I found myself intrigued. I noticed him stealing glances, lingering just a bit too long after bringing over a book or flask, sweeping the same patch of floor near me over and over again. It wasn't too long before I had him bringing me tools and equipment, regularly. I see. As I mentioned, Mother was in absolute terror when she found out. Do you believe Mr. Martin did what he stands accused of? I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't seem like him, but... Albert can be quite... passionate. If the police believe he's to blame, then they must have a reason for it. It wasn't any secret that he hated Mother. Perhaps I should have ended things sooner. It was satisfying to know that Mother was displeased, but I never imagined it would lead to something like this. Well, it's nice to see she's all heart. What can you tell me about your brother? Andrew, Mama's precious little boy. If you've met him, you pretty much know all you need to. He's had the whole world handed to him on a silver platter. But he's in for a rude awakening someday. Mother can only provide for him for so long. Miss Montgomery, please don't lie to me. I know you've been conducting experiments with ethericity. I've seen the room you're renting on Forest Lane. What? But how? I found a spare key in your room, enclosed in a letter from your landlady. You went through my room? Through my private things? How dare you? Part of my job, Miss Montgomery. Now tell me about your experiments. No, Mr. Fordham, I don't think I will. You had no right to go through my private documents. And I'm not legally obligated to tell you anything. So kindly drop the subject before I decide to press charges against you for unlawful entry. Ooh, touchy, isn't she? Although, it's generally not a good idea to tell people you went through their things. So, you study botany. Fascinating subject. Are you an admirer of... My wife has the green thumb in the household. Plants are amazing. How do you mean? They need attention and care. Ignore a plant, and plants have many things to teach. These plants are impressive. Are they yours? Yes. 
I've developed a method to make them extra healthy and strong. They're larger than anything I've ever seen. How do you do it? Ah, uh, but I can't reveal my secrets, Mr. Fordham. The world will hear about my discovery soon enough. Incidentally, do you know anything about Easter lilies? No, I don't keep or grow those here. No more questions for now. Then if you don't mind, I have work to do. She's busy. That's not to bother her until we have something to ask her. Compton Street. We're not too far from Restaurant Row. When's the last time you ate, anyway? Please, let's not add eating to the list of things to nag me about. Considering how many eating establishments are in this neighborhood, the butcher picked a fantastic spot to set up shop. I do notice a distinct lack of stray cats in this neighborhood, though. One of Atwood's re-election posters, sorely lacking a mustache. Go on, Miles. Fix this grievous injustice. Not now, Bill. There are more important things to worry about. Spoil sport. I'm glad that Coulson still uses horses. I don't trust the new self-driving cabs. Bonbon's Restaurant. I never got a chance to go there. But I hear their deviled eggs are simply to die for. I'm sorry, I have no time for visitors today. You're Albert Martin's mother, aren't you? Who are you? Miles Fordham. I spoke with Albert, and he told me to give you a message. He said to tell you that St. Rock's dog is barking. Oh, I see. That's good, that's very good. You better come in, Mr. Fordham. Standing on the street just won't do. Welcome to my home, Mr. Fordham. I am Sabine Martin. I hope you understand that Albert has nothing to do with this awful business. Would you care for some tea? Well, her tune certainly changed when you gave her that message. I wonder what it meant. No, thank you, ma'am. I won't be staying long. A rather unremarkable book collection, I'm sorry to say. That statue, on the other hand, gives me the willies. For all we know, that rider is some sort of demon. He looks like he's having a good time, at least. It's some old man with a dog standing at the center of a crossroads. If that's meant to have any sort of significance, it's completely lost on me. Interesting. Those pots look as though they've been wrapped in tobacco leaves. I'm afraid that room is private, Mr. Fordham. I must respectfully ask you to not go in there. Of course. My apologies. The Virgin Mary? I must admit she was the last person I was expecting to see in here. A rather unremarkable book collection, I'm sorry to say. I've got a few questions for you, Mrs. Martin. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Do you know anything about Madame Laura Dupre? I never met her in person, but I know plenty about her. Like what? Nothing fit for a polite conversation, Mr. Fordham. But I can tell you this. Laura Dupre has far more enemies than she lets on. Does that include you or your son? It most certainly does not. I think I'll take you up on your offer for tea, after all. All right, Mr. Fordham. You'll have to give me a few minutes to heat up the kettle. I'll be back shortly. Amazing! Even more voodoo stuff back there! 
Why would she keep these particular items hidden from view? Good question. The tea should be ready in a few minutes, Mr. Fordham. You can help yourself once it's done. You're very kind, Mrs. Martin. I've got a few questions. I'll try to answer. Do you think your son is capable of doing what he stands accused of? Never. Albert wouldn't harm a fly. That's what the mothers always say. Why don't you tell me a bit more about him then? He started working at the university laboratory a few years ago. I was so proud of him. The university is quite selective, you know. The same for its staff as well as its students. Yes, I've gotten that impression. I always told Albert to be careful around those high society types, but that one always thinks with his heart first. Is she sure that's the correct body part? He's all the family I have, Mr. Fordham. If you'll indulge my curiosity, what exactly was the meaning of Albert's message? Saint Rock is the patron saint of dogs, as well as the falsely accused. If he sent the message along with you, it means he trusts you, and that I should too. Oh, I see. Perhaps you were hoping for something more? That's just the way of mysteries, isn't it? How do you mean? The thrill of the unknown is always more exciting than the truth. Mystery makes life a little more interesting. True, but if mysteries were really better unsolved, I wouldn't have a job. What do you know about Juliet, Madame Dupre's daughter? I know Albert was smitten with her, no matter that I told him to be very careful around her kind. Those rich Creole families don't care much for people like us. To them, we're just a help. But from his telling, Juliet sounded to be a decent soul. It's a shame the same can't be said for her kin. What exactly is it you do, Mrs. Martin? I provide services to the public. A delightfully vague answer if there ever was one. Give me something a bit more specific, please. I'm a mambo a segue. That means I'm what you call a voodoo queen. I'd give you a detailed explanation of the responsibilities and duties of the role, but your time would be better spent clearing my son's name. Can you tell me a bit more about your- What I can tell you is that the ignorant whites in this city are afraid of us for no reason. Voodoo is not about black magic or dark spells or turning people into the living dead. It's about healing and life. Naturally, there are misguided souls who may try to use it for ill purposes, but I am not one of those. Sounds like you hit a sore spot. Might be a good idea to stop pressing her on this angle. About that back room of yours. I beg your pardon? I don't know about this, Miles. Is this really a road you want to go down? Actually, never mind. I misspoke. Thank you for your help. My pleasure. Aren't you going to have your tea, Mr. Fordham? I'm afraid I just remembered something important I need to look into. Suit yourself. Good day to you, officer. Afraid I ain't got time for idle chat, sir. Please. Good day to you, officer. Afraid I- Please. If only that police officer wasn't guarding the tomb, you could go in there and raid it to your heart's content. Looks like people have left markings. You may think it's a silly super- The plaque says- This just goes to show you can't take it with you. So you might- This quack hasn't gotten anything more for us to learn right now.
Who's a pretty bird? Ray's a pretty bird. Holly, want a cracker? No, thank you. Pieces of eight? Bye, matey. Who's a pretty bird? Ray's a pretty bird. Holly, want a cracker? No, thank you. Pieces of eight? Bye, matey. So long, birdie. Rock! Bye bye! Pardon me, miss. I told you I'm very busy, and I'll get in trouble if I'm caught speaking to you. Amelie, please. I need to know what you know about Madame Dupre. What? How did you know my name? Juliet told me about you. Miss Juliet? Yes, I spoke to her at the university. She mentioned you two were friends. Yes, that's right. She's always been so good to me. Look, Amelie, I'm just trying to get some information. And I have a feeling you can be very helpful if you just let me talk to you. All right, fine. But do it as fast as you can. Tell me about Madame Dupre. Oh, I really shouldn't, sir. It would greatly help my investigation if you did. Madame Dupre was kind enough to hire me as her cook. It's hard to get jobs in the city. Lots of people want their servants to use those, those new machines. My sister's brother-in-law got half his leg blown off by one of those new ovens. He's lucky he wasn't killed. So I'm plenty happy working here doing real people's work. But Madame can be difficult sometimes. Difficult? What do you mean by that? No, no, I, I said enough. What do you know about Madame Dupre's supposed death? All I can tell you is that whoever did it really hated her. Do you know Albert Martin, the man accused of the crime? No, I'm sorry. What can you tell me about Andrew? He ain't so bad. Kinda spoiled, but he mostly cleans up after himself. Has a whole private part of the house, but I think he only uses one room. Better for me, way less to clean. <laughs> What do you know about Juliet? She was always so kind to me and the others, but her mother don't like that one bit. Still, she sneaks down into the kitchen to keep me company some nights. Even though she's a good soul, I think part of her does it just to spite her mother. Are you the only remaining servant here? No, there's another one, Marcel. He's the new gardener. I haven't seen him in a few days, though. Not since before Madame's incident. Thank you, Amelie. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Now please, let me get back to work. Yeah, it looks like gumbo's on the menu tonight. Some kind of water disp- Uh, it's times like these make me w I have some questions for you. Oh, goody. What can you tell me about your sister, Juliet? I'm reminded of a famous quote, Mr. Fordham. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Let us part on good terms and avoid the subject altogether, please. Thanks for your time. No, thank you for yours. There's nothing useful to the investigation in there. Nice bouquet of roses. Although it would make things much easier. If only. Locked. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Well, someone's fancy. I always thought that- Yes, you would think that about a bed. I've never seen so many beauty products together in one place. Doesn't-
There doesn't seem to be much else of interest among the papers. They're all empty. How unusual. Not to mention disappointing. A much younger Madame Dupre. I suppose that's a nice alternative to a mirror. You've got some huge bags under your eyes, Miles. Reminds me of the case we had on- uh, don't remind- Hmm. Seems Madame Dupre fancies herself a poet. Well, that was life-changing. For once in my life, I'm completely speechless. Then perhaps I should take this with me and read it more often. Nah. I read that one last... I don't even want to know what... Nothing else of interest in there. The science of far Is this really the best that medical science has to offer? Hmm. The bottle is empty. I have some questions for you. Oh... I found this bottle of pills upstairs. Are they yours? Yes. I take those from time to time when I'm feeling tired. You seem to be out. Hmm, yes. That is a pity. <laughs> Where do you usually acquire them? Oh, they're available by mail order only. I'll have to remember to request some later. Thanks for your time. No. Thank you for yours. Stick around. Don't worry. No. Stick around. I may have more. Don't worry. This, this quack hasn't got her eyes are glazed. If we didn't know she. With her vast sums of wealth, madam, instead. Can we talk? Go on, I'm listening. I wanted to go over the case with you. Okay, what have you got? I seem to have hit a roadblock. There's an officer posted at Dupre's family tomb, and he won't let me in. Makes sense. Who's the officer? I've never seen him before. He's young, has a small scar over his left eye, and a distinct Dixie accent. Ah yes, that would be Officer Grant. He's only been with the department for about two months. I don't know a lot about him, but he's already got the reputation for being the type of policeman who'd go out of his way to help old ladies cross the street. Typical southern gentleman, it seems. Perhaps you can use that to your advantage? That's enough about the case for now. Okay. That's it, I think. Then you'd better...
Honey, I'm home. You know, I've always wanted to say that. It's always nice to see you walk through that door. So what's this big case Upton's got you on? Another missing pet? If only. A Gascon Grand Dam was attacked and almost interred alive. You mean Madame Dupre? The one whose obituary was in the paper? The very same. Goodness, that does sound serious. Tell me if there's anything I can do to help. I know you haven't been feeling your best lately. You're always a help to me, Addie. Though I assure you I have this well in hand. I certainly hope so. Addie? Yes, dear? How's work going? Yes. One, it's been a bit slow lately, but pretty soon it'll... You sure I can't convince you to let me give you a little trim? What's the point? I've got no need to go peacocking around. I like it when you're clean cut. It brings... The way my eyes have been looking lately, I think it's best to keep them hidden. I was wondering if you could do me a favor. What is it? There's an officer posted in front of Madame Dupre's family tomb, and I need to get a look inside. Could you use your wiles and charm to distract him? My wiles and charm, hmm? Well, you are irresistible, darling. I'm sure he wouldn't turn away a lady in need. Say you've gotten lost in the cemetery and ask him to show you the way out. Should we really be tricking a police officer like that? There's no harm in it, and I won't be but a moment inside. It's in a good cause. All right, let's go then. Excuse me, officer. I was wondering if you could help me? Hmm? What do you want? I seem to have gotten all turned around. Do you have any idea how to get to the front gate? My suggestion would be to turn around and head back the way you came. Yes, I've tried that, but I seem to just be going in circles. Perhaps you could point me in the right direction? Stop right there. That's quite enough from you. I beg your pardon? Don't think I can't tell what your game is. You're trying to lure me away from here and into some alley where your gang of Sambos is gonna rob me blind. Exactly how many of them have you got lying in wait for poor unsuspecting fools you bring them? Just one. And he doesn't appreciate you talking to his wife that way. You know, Miles, sometimes I forget how absolutely delightful it is to watch you lose your head. Miles, was that really necessary? I'm sorry, Addy. You know how I get with people whose minds are full of that rubbish. Let's just get him out of sight before this lands both of us in jail. That bush over there should work. I have to say, I wasn't expecting assaulting a policeman to be on today's activity list. It'll be fine. When you're on the force as long as I was, you can pretty much get away with murder. Although I think you may have already used up that privilege. Well, it's been fun, but I need to take my wiles and charm over to my appointment with Mrs. Lefebvre. I'll see you at home later, dear. Try to stay out of trouble. What a dramatic statue. I'm rather surprised no one has defaced it. Hang on. You don't suppose this is... That nest is full of eggs, but where's the mother bird? Perhaps she abandoned it. Always assuming the worst, aren't you, Miles? I suppose the whole heaven shining down upon the tomb motif is good for the dead people's self-esteem. Surprise, surprise! A hidden compartment with a stash of pills inside. Seems Mr. Montgomery has a little business on the side. Celine, 1823 to 1844. Taken too soon, rest ye with the angels. John Patrick Chesterton, 1740. Desmond Chesterton, seven. Jane's, seven. William Arthur Chesterton's. Douglas Chesterton, 1791 to 1840. Good riddance. Hmm. Dale Chesterton, seven. These crypts are reserved for future generations of Chestertons to rot in. There are only three left. Then let's hope the Chestertons aren't opposed to spending eternity cozied up to one another.
I have some questions for you. Oh. You'll never believe what I found in your family's tomb. Oh? Was it a ghost? <laughs> no, it was these vigor pills. You wouldn't happen to know how they got there, would you? I see you really are good at your job, aren't you, Mr. Fordham? Look, Andrew, I'm in no mood for games. I'm willing to overlook your unlawful activities in exchange for your cooperation. Fine, but you have to understand, I'm not exactly feeling myself right now. I understand perfectly, which is why I need you to take one of these pills. Mm, I suppose one would help. Thank you. My goodness, I always forget how fast those pills work. My heart is racing. <laughs> You said you had questions, didn't you? Well, go on, ask them already. We mustn't waste any more time. Well, that seems to have done the trick. I just hope we haven't doomed him to a heart attack. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? I can't believe anyone would be so cruel as to do what that wretched bastard Martin did to her. Mother is kind and generous and everyone loves her. She's even good enough to hire actual people to do the housework. Not many wealthy families do that, you know. They just use automated machines or hire servants to operate the manual ones. What can you tell me about your sister, Juliet? Ah, uh, Juliet, smart as a whip and just as forgiving. She's a fighter, that one. Despite being the only woman in her class, she's managed to rank at the top. Impressive. I only wish Mother was more accepting of Juliet going to university. But you don't want to hear about boring family matters, I'm sure. Oh, but family matters are my favorite. It's always so reassuring to know how much worse off everyone else is. What exactly were the circumstances leading up to your mother's supposed death? A few days ago, I arrived home from school and found her collapsed on the floor. She wasn't breathing, so I immediately contacted Dr. Fellows. He examined her and pronounced her dead. We were all completely shocked. I was devastated. She'd been in fine health. In fact, she'd just been out riding that morning. You can imagine our surprise at the funeral when she sprang back to life. What's your relationship with the servants like? <laughs> relationship? I don't have one with them. They're servants. Mother always made it clear that they weren't part of the family. Just help. We've only got two on staff right now, though. The kitchen girl and the gardener. How is it you know Albert Martin? He works at the greenhouse where my sister Julia does her research. The two of them were involved romantically, and Mother didn't like that at all. I heard their fights. They were ghastly. What exactly made you suspect he was the one responsible for what happened to your mother? Well, I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? His mother's a notorious voodoo witch. Those people do all sorts of awful things to our kind. It's all out of spite, you know. He knew Mother disapproved of his relationship with Juliet, so he plotted to get rid of her. So, you're running some kind of pill business on the side? Uh, I'm providing a service, Mr. Fordham. Not everyone in this life is as lucky as I am. People pay top crown for luxuries like airship tickets and social club memberships. Medicine should be affordable to all. Dr. Tennyson has a patent on the energy pill formula and thus a monopoly on the market. That means he can charge whatever he wants. Students use these kinds of pills all the time, you know. Academic rigors can be overwhelming and concentrating can be difficult without help sometimes. I've got the skills and the equipment. If I can replicate the formula, help my fellow students, and sell them at a much more reasonable price, why shouldn't I? There's the fact that what you're doing is illegal. Oh, you're starting to sound just like mother. And just because it's illegal doesn't mean it's immoral. I can think of plenty of examples where the opposite is true. You're probably the most altruistic person I've met all month. The sad part is it's true. That's a rather exotic bird you've got. Yes, Ray is nice when he's quiet. But get him started and it's tough to shut him up. Who trained him? I think he already knew some phrases when Mother bought him. She's managed to teach him a few new ones, though. 
How do you typically spend your days, Mr. Montgomery? What are your interests? I study pharmacology at the university. I'll be graduating next year if all goes well. I just hope Mother has recovered enough by then to understand what's going on. She and Jean were so proud of me when I started university. I'd be so disappointed if she couldn't see me finish. I take it Jean is your stepfather. He is. Mother married him five years after my father died of consumption. My condolences. Do you have a good relationship with him? Not terribly. Truth is, I hardly ever see him. In fact, before the funeral, I hadn't seen him at all this month. Where is he now? I don't know for certain, but it seems likely he's at his hunting cabin. His hunting cabin? Yes, he often goes there. It's his way of leaving polite society behind and spending time with his thoughts. Considering what Mother just went through, well, I would guess that's where he's gone. Although to be honest, I don't know why he's not here with Mother in her time of need. Why do people run away from their problems instead of facing them? Why, Miles? Do you know where this cabin is? Afraid not. I don't share his passions, so I never cared much to accompany him on his outings. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Who's a pretty bird? Raise a pretty bird. Holly want a cracker? No thank. Pieces of eight. Who's a pretty? Right. Holly want? No. Pieces of. Who's a pretty? Right. Holly want? No. Pieces of. Tip a canoe. A pile of poo. Who's a pretty bird? Raise a. Holly want? No. Pieces of eight. Who's a pretty? Raise. Holly want? No. Pieces of. Who's a pretty? Raise. Holly want a cry? No. Pieces of. Who's a pretty? Raise. Holly want a. No. Pieces of. Who's a pretty? Raise. Holly want a. No. Pieces of. Who's a pretty? Raise. So long. Amelie? Yes? What is it? We mustn't be seen talking. Anything you can tell me about John? I hardly ever see him. Only at dinner. He's scared of Madame, and so he finds any reason to get out of the house and stay away as long as he can. Scared of her? Well, it's true. You should see him when they're in private. Like a shamed puppy that dirtied the carpet. Interesting. Do you have any idea why Jean is so afraid of Madame Dupre? If he's seen the same things we have, then yes. What kind of things? No, I spoke out of turn. Forget I said anything. Amelie, listen to me. A potentially innocent man's life is on the line. If I don't find out who attacked Madame Dupre, he's as good as dead. So if there are any facts or details you know that I don't, you need to tell me. I, I can't. You can. I'm not with the police. If Madame Dupre did something wrong, I'm not going to look the other way. Trust me, I'm on your side. Madam beats the servants. I, I think she even does it for fun. I hear the screams sometimes. I don't know how anyone else in the family doesn't. Maybe they do and just ignore it, I don't know. But if Mr. Dupre knows what she do, it explains why he's so scared of her. Did Madame Dupre ever abuse you? No, I was lucky, but some of the others weren't. Like who? I need details, Amelie. The old gardener, Guy Dumas, and one of the maids, Celine. I saw Madame going after them the most. Don't know what they did to deserve it, but I would see her walk by in a rage, whip in one hand and a book in the other. A book? What book? Oh, I don't know. I, I can't read, so I don't know what it said on the cover. But it's the same color as the stew spice I always use. Don't know what she used it for, but she always had it with her, just before a beating. Maybe she'd recite them some of her terrible poetry. I'm sure that was torture enough. Tell me more about Guy and Celine. They were deeply in love with each other. I used to hear them talk about how they wanted to run away together. What happened to them? 
Uh, I don't know. One day they were here, and then one day they weren't. Do you think Madame Dupre may have done something to them? I couldn't say for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if she had. Please, let's not talk about... Thank you, Amal. You're welcome. Now... Hey, it looks like gumbo's on the menu tonight. I wonder how it compares with Upton's special recipe. Looks like the type of spices you'd use in a stew. Most likely paprika. Well, this should be the book Amelie mentioned. Well, well, what have we here? A whip, and it has dried blood on it. How ghastly. This house is just full of secrets, isn't it? I have some questions for you. All right. Did you know Guy Dumas? The old gardener? Sure, I knew him. We didn't talk very much. He was just a servant after all. Then he seemed like a nice man. He stopped coming around about two months ago. Too bad, really. He did a good job of keeping the gardens looking nice. The new one is all right. But he just doesn't have that special touch Guy did. Were you familiar with a servant named Celine? Yes, I believe she was one of the maids. I didn't talk to her very much. Oh, she quit not so long ago. At least I assume she did. I haven't seen her in about three months. Thanks for your time. My pleasure. Doctor, may I ask you a few questions? Please, be my guest. Tell me what you know about Jean Dupre. I'd rather not speak of him. Madame Dupre does not need to be agitated any further. I take it you don't look very favorably upon him, then. I'll just say this. If my wife had been attacked and left for dead, you can be sure I wouldn't leave her side. What a gentleman. He doesn't even leave women who aren't his wife. I see what you mean. Do you know where I might find him? I only wish I did. Those are all the questions I've got for now. I hope I answered them adequately. But they're vast sums of <laughs> instead. Can we talk? Go on, I'm listening. I wanted to go over the case with you. Okay, what have you got? I'm having a bit of trouble locating Jean Dupre. I know he has a hunting cabin in the swamp, but it could be anywhere. The swamp is fairly big. It can be hard to locate just one cabin. I suppose it would make sense to ask someone in his family about it. That's enough about the case for now. Okay. That's it, I think. Then you'd better get... Hello again, Miss Montgomery. Mind answering a few more questions? Hello, Mr. Fordham. Not at all. 
Is there anything you can tell me about your stepfather, Jean? He's a kind man. I don't really see him too often. He seemed rather upset at Mother's funeral, but I can't help but wonder if he feels the same way as I do about her death. What do you mean? Just that I get the distinct impression that he and Mother's marriage isn't as perfect as they'd like it to appear. Uh, I'm starting to sense a trend here. Your brother told me that Jean enjoys hunting. Do you know where his cabin is? Yes, it's in Fenton Swamp. I went out there with him a few times, but I didn't really enjoy it. Frankly, the place is rather grotesque. All those stuffed trophies staring at you with their cold, dead eyes. Plants are much nicer to have around. Anyway, if you take the main road through the swamp, about a mile and a half, you'll come upon a small dirt path that goes northeast. Take that until you see a small cabin on the left. That's it. Thank you for the information, Miss Montgomery. Do you know Guy Dumas? Yes, he was one of our servants. He used to enjoy reading my books, as well as Andrew's. When did you see him last? Just last week. He came by to see me and asked to borrow some books. Do you know where I might be able to find him? Not really. I get the impression that he moves around frequently. But I can tell him you're looking for him next time I see him, if you like. Please do. Although hopefully I'll be able to find him before then. Were you friends with Celine, the maid? Yes, I was quite fond of Celine. She was so sweet and interesting to talk to. One day, she just left the house with no explanation. Mother said it was because she had found work elsewhere. I was terribly saddened. I wish I'd had the chance to say goodbye to her, at least. What's your interest in her? Oh, I was just curious, that's all. No more questions for now. Then if you don't mind, I have work to do. Welcome back, Mr. Fordham. She's not going to be much help right now. A nest is full of eggs. Perhaps she abandoned it. Always a. I have to admit, it's a fair. I have to admit. I have to admit. I suppose the whole. These crypts are reserved. There are only. Th then let's hope. These crypts. There are only. Then let's. Dale Chesterton, 1795. This must be what was going to be Madame Dupre's final resting place. I don't see anything inside. What? Were you expecting a note from her attacker? No, but I was hoping for some kind of clue, at the very least. This must be what was going- I don't see anything inside- What? No. Douglas Chesterton. S William Arthur- Celine. 1823 to 1844. Hmm. You don't suppose- Nah. Celine, 1823 to 1844. Hmm. You don't. Nah. Sarah Chesterton, 17. Dale Chesterton, 17. Jane Scott Chesterton, 7. Desmond Chesterton. John Patrick Chesterton. These crypts are reserved for. There are only three left. Then let's hope the Chestertons aren't a. Hello? Is anyone here? Strange of Dupre to leave the door unlocked. 
Maybe it means he'll be returning soon. One of the guns is missing. Jean must be out using it currently. Satchels, boxes, and other assorted boring things for hunting. Let's see if Jean has anything interesting. Not very much. Who the hell are you? What are you doing in my cabin? Jean Dupre, I presume? Yes, that's right. Who are you? Miles Fordham, private investigator. I'm looking into the attempted murder of your wife. Oh yes, yes, of course. Forgive my rudeness, but you startled me. <laughs> Perfectly understandable, Mr. Dupre. This is a man whose bark is most definitely worse than his bite. You know, I've heard it said that needing to have so many guns is a sign of overcompensation. It seems Mr. Dupre is a Bowlingworth man. Maybe he's not so bad after all. Not a very dignified end for our friend Mr. Bear. Some high society type in the middle of a hunt. I don't understand. You really have to wonder about someone who chooses to surround themselves with dead things. Can we talk, Mr. Dupre? I suppose so, yes. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? Oh, my dear wife, the past few days have been just awful for all of us. Yes, I can imagine. How long have you been married? For seven wonderful years. Laura and I are just as much in love now as we were on the day we married. Lord, does he actually expect anyone to believe that nonsense? You'll pardon me for being so frank, Mr. Dupre, but why are you out hunting and not at your wife's side? Excuse me? Who are you to lecture me on my marriage? A fellow married man, that's who. Your wife has just suffered a very traumatic ordeal. Shouldn't you be at home caring for her? But with all the confusion at the house, with the police investigating and her being attended to by her doctor, I just needed to get away for a bit. Surely you can understand, Mr. Fordham. There's something off about this guy, Miles. He's definitely hiding something. And for once, I don't think it's from his wife. Do you know anything about the circumstances surrounding Madame Dupre's Death? Horrible. Simply horrible. Do you have any idea why Mr. Martin might have attempted to kill her? Mr. Martin? <gasps> you mean the boys they arrested? Andrew said it's because Martin and his mother are witches who prey on the well-to-do. You only need to take one look at him to see his trouble. It's a shame they put him away so quickly. I'd have liked to teach him a lesson or two, believe you me. Yeah, right. A lesson on how to cower in the corner, most likely. What can you tell me about your stepchildren? Ah, uh, Andrew and Juliet? I see a bright future ahead for both of them. What's your relationship with them like? It's fine. Why do you ask? I got the distinct impression from both of them that they hardly ever see you. Well, yes, I suppose that is true. We don't spend much time together, but they're both so busy with school. I don't want to get in their way. Not to mention my job keeps me away from home for considerable periods of time. Excuses, excuses. I get the feeling Mr. Dupre avoids his family on purpose, but why? Do you fear your wife, Mr. Dupre? Do I... what? The question's quite simple. Are you afraid of Madame Dupre? Why in the easy would you think that? I'd be afraid of someone who kept a bloody whip in my bedroom. Care to explain that? I... 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 You don't know her like I do. No one does. Well, no one aside from the servants, I suppose. She's cruel, Mr. Fodder. Crueler than anyone or anything I've ever seen. Tell me more about Madame Dupre's cruelty. She treats the servants like animals, Mr. Fodder. 
She would say the most vile, awful things to them. Things I would expect to hear on the Gascon docks, not from the lips of a grand dame. And the beatings. Oh, God. The screams I would hear from somewhere in the house. I never dared find out where. Nobody else ever heard the screaming? No. She was cunning. She would do it when no one else was around. Once she knew I had heard, she threatened me. Told me she would... Yes? She threatened to expose my secret, Mr. Fordham. And what secret is that? Our marriage is one of convenience. It's all for show. Laura has herself a well-to-do husband, and I... I'm a normal man in the eyes of society. I see. I suppose that would explain a few things. Well, now, how was that not obvious to you? The soporific is really having a bad effect on you. Don't worry, Mr. Dupre. Your secret's safe with me. S thank you, Mr. Fordham. Tell me what you know about Guy Dumas and Celine. <sighs> Celine had uh, an accident. What kind of accident? Laura thought Celine had been stealing her silverware. She got a bit carried away with a beating and... Dupre killed Celine? Yes, she did. In order to keep it quiet, she had Celine placed in our family tomb. I see. What about Guy? I don't know. I never saw him again after that. Well, this case has certainly taken a turn for the sinister. Do you know anything about Madame Dupre trying to get Juliet taken out of her classes at the university? Ah, yes. Laura didn't approve of her daughter's desire to further her education. So, she sent a letter to the university requesting Juliet's withdrawal. I didn't approve of her trying to meddle in Juliet's affairs. If she wants to study, she should be free to do so. I wrote them a letter myself, without Laura's knowledge, telling them to disregard the previous request for withdrawal. That's very good of you. Yes, well... I dislike seeing people being told what they can and can't do by others. Yet, he seems perfectly willing to employ servants at his home. Well, I suppose we're all hypocrites in one way or another. I suppose it goes without saying that you enjoy hunting, Mr. Dupre? Yes, I do. I consider myself something of an outdoorsman, you see. It's nice to be able to go out and get some fresh air after being sat at the bank all day. What about your home life? Truth be told, I'm not at home as often as I'd like to be. I've been trying to make more time, but something usually comes up. Business is business, after all. Yeah, but what business are we talking about here, exactly? I'll be going now. Au revoir, Miss. This must be what was going to be Madame Dupre's final resting place. I don't see any- What? No. Celine. 1823 to- Wait a minute. This is Celine, the maid. Somehow a piece of paper got wedged into the side of the vault. Carefully now. Got it! Nice work, Fordham. Now to see what this is. Interesting. Leaving notes for the dead. How very touching. 
I wonder if anyone has left me one at my grave. Quiet, Bill. I need to think. We know this note is likely from Guy. Now we just need to figure out where to find him. Is there anything on the other side of that piece of paper? Bill, you're a genius. I wouldn't give me all the credit just yet. Let's see, a receipt for an extended stay at the Stun Arms. Does that sound familiar at all? Mmm, vaguely. But I can't recall anything off the top of my head. Looks like we'll have to do a bit more searching. Talk. Go on, hi. I wanted to go over the case with you. Okay. I found this note in the Chesterton tomb. I think it was left by the person who attacked Madame Dupre. Nice work. Sounds like you're about ready to wrap things up. I will be as soon as I find him. Take a look at the other side of it. Part of a receipt for a hotel? Yes, but the name is only partially visible at the bottom. Stun Arms. Hmm. The only hotel that comes to mind is the Boston Arms in Chumley. Of course! I knew the names. Ah, the stories I could tell you about that place. Not right now, of course. You're helpful as always, Upton. Thank you. Good luck, Fordham. I hope you find your suspect. That's enough about the case. Okay. That's it, I think. Then you'd better get back to it. Is it? Mr. Dumas, listen to me. I don't want to make this into more of an issue than it should be, but I believe it's in your best interest to let me in so I can speak with you. Just a moment. I'm Miles Fordham, a private investigator. It's extremely important I speak with you, Mr. Dumas. What do you want? Just to talk. May I come in? Yes, I suppose so. I found your note in St. Dennis Cemetery. Care to explain what it means? How, how did you... I'm a private investigator, Mr. Dumas. It's what I do. Now we can either do this the easy way or the hard way. It's up to you. I left that note for Celine. I didn't think anyone would ever find it. So it was you who attacked Madame Dupre? Yes. Yes, it was me. I confess. <laughs> I can't remember the last time a suspect actually confessed. If only they were all like this. But please, Mr. Fordham... You have to understand, the woman is evil. If only you knew what she did. Please, don't arrest me, Mr. Fordham. You have to know the truth about Madame Dupre. Relax, Mr. Dumas. I'm not going to arrest you just yet. I'm perfectly willing to hear your side of the story. Now let's take this nice and slow. What can you tell me about Madame Dupre? She seemed like a nice woman at first, but after working for her, I came to know how awful she truly was. When no one was around, she would beat me and some of the other servants for fun, say the most cruel things, call us horrible names. Why didn't you just leave? She threatened us, told us she would make it impossible for us to get work anywhere else. It's already difficult enough getting a job that doesn't force you to operate those awful machines. To be blacklisted by Madame Dupre would have been the final nail in the coffin. Tell me about Celine. Oh, my dear Celine. She was the most beautiful thing I ever saw. We were going to get married, you know. Then that devil killed her. She... She beat her to death in front of me. I was powerless to do anything. Please, Mr. Fordham, I don't want to remember. Let us speak of something else. Do you know Albert Martin? No. Who is that? He's Juliet's lover, falsely accused of the crime you committed. I... I had no idea. Are you going to let an innocent man die because of what you did? No. No, of course not. I... I suppose things got out of hand. It was not my intention for someone else to take the blame for my actions. 
So why did you attack Madame Dupre in the way you did? I knew that if I went to her home and killed her, I would be caught and thrown in jail. I needed to find a way to do it quietly and not make anyone suspicious. Also, I wanted her to suffer for what she did to my Celine. I had read about toxic plants in Juliet's school books, and I knew a bit about them from working as a gardener. So I decided to poison Dupre and make her appear dead so she could be buried alive and suffer the same way she made us when she would lock us away in her secret room. Did you say secret room? Yes, Mr. Fordham. It was no bigger than a coffin. She would place us inside if she was especially mad at us, with no food or water, sometimes for days at a time. We couldn't scream because she would stuff our mouths. She would also plug our ears and cover our faces. How often did she put you in there? Only a few times, but that was more than enough. I'd rather not think about it. So you have no idea where it is? None. I only remember Madame Dupre would say the same thing any time she was about to put someone in there. A perfect servant must behave. I've told you everything, Mr. Fordham. Are you still going to arrest me? I haven't quite decided yet, Mr. Dumas. If I can find this secret room, it would be enough to charge Madame Dupre with a crime. However, if you haven't been telling me the truth... I have been, Mr. Fordham. I swear it. I'll even make you a deal. If you promise me you'll try to find the secret room, I won't leave this hotel. All right, Duma, it's a deal. Well, at least now we can go straight to Upton and have him taken in. Unless you really do believe him about the secret room. How did you come to be employed by Madame Dupre? I used to work in an iron factory in Chomley, but a few years ago, they brought in some steam machines to help production. One of the machines had a problem, and my friend Connor and I were assigned to fix it. We had no idea what we were doing, but we wanted to keep our jobs. I don't know what happened, but the next thing I knew, Connor was dead, and I was badly hurt. I swore never to go near one of those machines again after I got better. I spent a few months looking for work, but it was impossible to find any jobs that didn't involve steam tech. Then I found out about Madame Dupre. Working at her home seemed like an improvement. I had a decent bed to sleep in. The work was not difficult, and I even made friends with her daughter, but Madame Dupre soon showed her true nature. That's all for right now, but I'll be- Yes, Mr. Fordham. I'll be here. A wash basin? Where did this place get so fancy? It appears someone is due for seven years of bad luck. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's crooked paintings. Seems to be what passes for a dresser around here. Either that or Dumas is secretly a pirate. This quack hasn't gotten it. As amusing as it is to chat with this oddball, I think we've ex- Oh, dear God, no, please, let's not expose ourselves to that drivel again. Nothing else of interest. The science of form. It must be a nice place to sit. I don't know. 
much about art, but... Amelie? Yes? What is it? I found this upstairs in Madame... Oh, please take that away, Mr. Fordham. Why would you show it to me? I'm sorry. I didn't think it would upset you. Ugh, Miles. Maybe someday you'll learn... Thank you, Amelie. You're welcome. A perfect servant must behave. And now you'll taste an early grave. <coughs> Me so far, Ray. <coughs> In the middle, see? A perfect servant must behave. And now you'll taste an early grave. <coughs> Me so far, Ray. <coughs> In the middle, see? So long, Birdie. <coughs> bye bye. nothing here. That beast better not have misled us, or he'll be roasting on a spit for sure. There's nothing here. That beast... There's nothing here. That beast... Locked. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Nothing. Damn that bird! What the hell was he babbling about? As amusing as it is to chat. A perfect servant must behave. And now you'll taste an early grave. <coughs> Me so far, Ray. <coughs> In the middle, see? Polly want a cracker? No, thank you. <coughs> Pieces of eight? <coughs> Who's a pretty bird? <coughs> Ray's a pretty bird. Polly want a cracker? No, thank you. So long. <coughs> Do you suppose that's for the bird? Or perhaps for the Dupre family? Stick around. I may Don't worry. Not As a music... Perfect servant must behave. And now you'll taste an early grave. <coughs> Me so far, Ray. <coughs> In the middle, see? So long.
That seems to have done something. Dear God! This does not look good. He's dead. You should inform Dr. Fellows about this right away. It seems Guy was telling the truth after all. Yes, it would probably be a good idea to let him know of this development. Guy? Y yes I... I found the secret room you told me about. You see? I wasn't lying. No, you certainly weren't. There was someone inside. A man. No. Who? I'm not sure, but I can only assume it was one of Madame Dupre's servants. Was he alright? I'm afraid not. He was dead. Dr. Fellows confirmed it was due to asphyxiation. Madame Dupre must have put him in there before I drugged her. And then, with everything that happened, she didn't let him out in time. Oh my god, it's my fault he's dead. If only I'd known. The circumstances are quite unfortunate, Mr. Dumas. However, this has shed a new light on Madame Dupre and her cruel practices. I can't say for certain that you were justified in your actions, but... I am a bit reluctant to say you were completely at fault. But the bottom fact is that Mr. Martin has been falsely accused of this crime. If I were to let you go, he would be punished in your place. Unless... Yes? I'm going to need you to write me a letter, Mr. Dumas. Of course, Mr. Fordham. Anything to take care of this mess. Good. Hopefully now this whole grim affair can be brought to an end. That's all for right now, but I'll be back. Yes, Mr. Fordham. I'll be here. Could I ask you some more questions, Mr. Martin? It's not like I'm... Albert, did you hate Madame Dupre? The woman is cruel, sadistic, and bigoted. When she found out about my relationship with Juliet, oh, she, she sent me a letter threatening to have me killed if I got near her house or her daughter. So yes, Mr. Fordham, I hated her. But even so, I love her daughter. I wouldn't be so cruel as to take Juliet's mother away from her, even if she hated her too. I beg your pardon? Juliet and her mother didn't get along at all. I never asked why, but it was obvious there was something going on. Intriguing. That's all for now. Hello again, Miss Montgomery. Mind answering a few more questions? Hello, Mr. Fordham. Not at all. Did your mother try to get you withdrawn from the university? As a matter of fact, she did. Just another one of the many ways she tried interfering with my life. What happened, exactly? Mother wrote the university requesting that I be withdrawn. I found out about it when the enrollment office contacted me. I couldn't believe it at first. I thought it was some sort of mistake. But then they showed me the letter. I take it you were upset. More than upset, Mr. Fordham. I was furious. I was trying to make a real life for myself. One that wasn't about dresses or debutante balls or fending off suitors. I'd been given the chance to make something of myself. And Mother was ready to bring it all crashing down. Just because she didn't agree with it. But in the end, you're still here. Yes. Jean stepped in and fixed everything. He didn't have to do it but it was very good of him. I'm afraid that was the beginning of the end of my relationship with Mother. We never really managed to fix things after that. No more questions for now. Then if you don't mind,
He's watching you like a hawk. Looks liable to toss you a- I bet that's a direct line to the police department. You should make a rude noise and- Nothing else to ask him right now. Can we talk? Go on, I'm listening. I think I'm ready to wrap this case up. Okay, who's your prime suspect? It was Guy Dumas, a former servant at Dupre Manor. He used toxic plants to drug Madame Dupre so she appeared dead, which he learned about from her daughter's school books. What was his motive? That's the thing. I've learned that Madame Dupre is extremely cruel to her servants. She regularly beats them, and even has a secret room no bigger than a coffin where she places them as punishment. I discovered this secret room and found a dead servant inside. He had died from asphyxiation. My God. A few months ago, Madame Dupre beat Guy's lover Celine to death. He wanted revenge and intended to make Madame Dupre suffer the trauma of being interred alive. I see. Constance, I don't think Dumas should be arrested for his crime. He doesn't deserve it. Madame Dupre, however... Yes, I see what you're saying, and I agree, but what about Mr. Martin? I got a signed confession from Mr. Dumas. You can see the handwriting matches this note I found in the cemetery. That should be enough to release Mr. Martin, as well as giving Guy a head start in his escape from the city. It's gonna be tricky getting the department to look into this, but with the proof you've gathered, it should work. Excellent investigating, Fordham. I knew you still had it in you. And of course I'll dip into the department's Good Samaritan Fund to get you proper compensation for your work. For now, go home to your wife. I'm sure I'll have something else for you to look into fairly soon. Good evening. I'm looking for Madame Laura Dupre. This is Madame Dupre. I am her personal physician, Dr. Fellows. May we help you, officer? I'm afraid I must place Madame Dupre under arrest. What? On what charge? Several, actually. Manslaughter, domestic violence, murder in the second degree. Shall I go on, or can we continue this at the police station? You won't have to worry about Madame Dupre anymore. She'll be in jail for a very long time. And Mr. Martin has been released with a full pardon as well. Thank you, Mr. Fordham. I appreciate your help and your trust. Think nothing of it, but you'll need to leave town as soon as you can. Have you made plans? I was thinking of heading south. New Britannia is too cold and dark. I want to find some place more like my home. Well, I wish you the best of luck, Mr. Dumas. Addie, I'm home. Addie? She must still be out at her hairdressing appointment. I'm glad we're alone because I wanted to talk to you about something. Yes, Bill, I know. I told you I'm doing my best to try and find the flower shop burglar. No, for once, this isn't about him. This is about you. Me? What are you on about? You can play dumb and deflect all you like with everyone else around you, but it won't work with me. I know exactly what you are thinking, and you know exactly what I'm going to say. You want to talk about how we did on this case? Yes, that's exactly right. Have you already forgotten the old days, Miles? Before I died, we were solving cases like nobody's business. You were one of the best detectives on the force. But ever since you started taking that soporific, your mind hasn't been as sharp as before. If you're serious about taking on more complex cases, you need to listen to Adelaide and stop taking it. It's already had a negative effect on your performance. What are you talking about? We were able to discover the truth about Madame Dupre. Yes, but if you were working at your full abilities, you'd have come to that conclusion much sooner. If I stop taking it, you won't let me sleep through the night. Nothing will change. Well, things would change if you found you-know-who. I thought you said we weren't going to talk about that right now. Yeah, well, I say a lot of things. An understatement if ever there was one. Can't you just keep quiet without me having to take something? Afraid not, old friend. That's just not who I am or how this works. If you keep me up all night, I'll go crazy. Things have been hard enough as it is. And if, God forbid, Adelaide were ever to find out about... Hello, Miles. Is there someone else here? 
I thought I heard you talking just now. Fantastic. The jig is up. And here I thought we were doing so well, too. No, there isn't anyone else here. I was just talking to myself. You're not going crazy on me, are you, Miles? No, no, of course not. Don't be ridiculous, Addie. Just checking. How was your appointment? Mrs. Lefebvre was her usual bossy and overly picky self, but she gave me a very generous tip. That's good. So I stopped by the shop on the way home and bought a new deck of cards. Excellent. Shall we have a few rounds of Eckarte? I believe you demanded a rematch last time we played. Yes, that would be nice. Well, you certainly managed to dodge that bullet. I only wish I could say the same. <laughs>